Welcome to our lecture online. Our next one is an interesting problem in that it has two radicals. And notice that they're on both sides of the equation. Now, on the right side, you also have a plus one term, which complicates things a little bit. Even if both of those radicals were on one side, you still probably want to separate them first before you square both sides. The rule is the same, you're going to square both sides, but first separate the two radicals, square both sides, and then see what happens. So we're going to square the left side, and we're going to square the right side. Okay, on the left side, that makes it easy. This simply removes the radical. We end up with 1 minus 3x on the left side. On the right side, we need to use the binomial properties. When we have a binomial and we square it, that means we take the first term squared, which is 3x, twice the product of the two, which is plus 2 times the square root of 3x, plus the square of the last term. And notice we still have a radical after we square both sides, which again means we need to separate the radical from all the, all the terms that don't have a radical. So that means we take 1 minus 3x, and then move the, minus, the 3x over becomes minus 3x, we move the 1 over becomes minus 1, equals 2 times the square root of 3x. Now combining these, notice the 1's cancel, 1 minus 1 is 0, and this becomes minus 6x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3x, and then when we divide both sides by 2, we get minus 3x is equal to the square root of 3x. Now we can square both sides. Well, you might say, well, wait a minute. How can the square root of something equal a negative number? But notice it's minus 3 times x. So when x is negative, the left side is not positive. So there are possibly still solutions to this particular equation. So let's just simply continue. We're going to square both sides again. So square the left side, square the right side. And so on the left side, we get 9x squared. And on the right side, we simply remove the radical. We get 3x. When we move that over, that gives us 9x squared minus 3x equals 0. Divide both sides by 3, we get 3x squared minus x equal to 0. Then when we factor out an x, we get x times 3x minus 1 equals 0. Now we have two things that are multiplied together, x and the quantity 3x minus 1. So if the product equals 0, that means either one must equal 0. In other words, x must equal 0 as a possible solution, or what's inside parentheses, 3x minus 1 must equal 0, which means that 3x equals 1, or x equals 1 third. So notice we have two possible solutions. Now, we can't claim victory yet because first we have to check them to make sure they're indeed valid. So let's do that. So let's first check x equals 0. What that means is we're going to plug 0 into each x in our original equation and see if that satisfies that equation. So 1 minus 3 times 0 is that equal to question mark the square root of 3 times 0 plus 1. So that's 0, we get the square root of 1 equals question mark 1. And notice the square root of 1, that's equal to 1, so 1 equals 1. And since that is true, that means x equals 0 is indeed a good solution to this original equation. How about the second, x equals 1 third? Well, let's check that one as well. Check x equal 1 third. We plug that into our equation, we get the square root of 1 minus 3 times 1 third is that equal to question mark the square root of 3 times 1 third plus 1. Okay, here, minus 3 times 1 third, that means minus 1, so we get the square root of 1 minus 1 is that equal to question mark the square root of, that would be 1, plus 1. So this would be the square root of 0, is that equal to question mark, that would be 1 plus 1. And if we solve that for that, we get 0 equals question mark 2. And of course, that's not true. 0 can never equal 2, which means that x equals 1 third is not a valid solution to our original problem. So there's only one, x equals 0, that will satisfy that equation. And that is how it's done.